There's no magic formula for anything and any dentist would agree with me in saying that each x-ray looks different. When we look at x-rays in clinic, that's in conjunction with what we see in the patient's mouth, so that's helpful. For example, diagnosing caries or diagnosing bone loss or periodontal disease or an infection on an x-ray. It's not that there's individuality between people, there's individuality between x-rays. I can get an x-ray and I can put a question next to that x-ray and there would be 10 correct answers for that specific x-ray. And I can get another x-ray and put a question next to it and there would only be one correct answer. You're inside the exam and you have to answer all of these questions. There's always this discussion or debate about how many answers should I choose in an exam. And so I think that's a challenging aspect of the exam to get a grasp on. It comes down to how aggressive do you want to be or how conservative do you want to be. And I think it should be neither of those things. I think it just should be you take each x-ray at a time, weigh each option against one another and see which options are worth choosing, which options are clear, and which options are better to just leave aside because you can't really make a decision on that option. The way this exam is conducted, it is subjective, but the way it is designed is basic radiology for a general practitioner. Of course, the exam has two main components. There's a cases component and an x-ray component. It's not an open battlefield. There is a, a specific structure to the cases. So you can think of it as like a finite number of questions that you might get. With radiology, you can get any x-ray in the exam. We've tried to include as much practice as possible in the course for x-rays so that when someone is in the exam attempting those questions on their own, they will have that same exact approach of analyzing the x-rays. What I do in my radiology lectures is I start off by focusing on the basics, the most common findings you will have in the x-ray, like caries, like bone loss, like endodontic infections, and then we start to build on that. And the way we do that is we look at the x-ray top to bottom, left to right, meaning, okay, what structures are visible in the radiograph? We look at all the teeth individually. The idea there is not just looking at a lot of x-rays, it's looking at a lot of x-rays and comprehensively analyzing them as a practice method. With the cases aspect, what we do is we deliver the basic concepts of everything, make sure we're very solid on that. We always try to approach different diseases, different medical conditions, different aspects of patient care from as many different viewpoints as possible. And then we continue the course by building on it, bringing as many cases as we can of similar diseases with different presentations or different diseases with similar presentations. In vague areas that's not really clarified in our references, what we do is we refer to specialist opinions. Coming out of AFK, people have immense amounts of knowledge. So it's not always about how much you know, it's about how to focus on what's really important. So what we've done is all of the concepts that we present in our books and in our lectures, first and foremost, it's evidence-based. Uh, what we do is we take a look at all of the references for those specific topics that are listed on the NDEB website. Pathology, periodontology, endodontics, radiology, anesthesia, Coming off of that, all of the answers that we choose to answer the questions that we make here and the way we structure our practice sessions, our quizzes and our mock exams is the bread and butter of what we got out of those references. Radiology is always more enjoyable to teach than other subjects because it's not really like a theoretical course that you're just giving information. It's more of a discussion like what do we see here, what could this be, what may be the diagnosis of this. It's not objective, there is some subjectivity to it, but that's one of the inherent features of an x-ray is that you can never depend on the x-ray to get the full picture of things. It always comes in conjunction with a clinical exam. In the beginning of the course, you get that feeling that the participants are still new and then as we progress through the course bit by bit you see everyone coming on the same page I would say and your eye gets used to it no matter what your field is what kind of dentistry you'd like to practice radiology is an essential part of diagnosing a patient and it's an essential part of conducting treatment and at the end of the day, the whole reason we're doing all of this is to help people through this process, difficult process on so many levels. It always comes down to the participants' very hard work. 
So there's always so much you can get out of an x-ray. It's really not that complicated. You just need to break it down comprehensively. But the more you look at x-rays, the more you're able to get from them in general.